Now, if we look how the data, the collected data can be used to protect the affected areas against further soil erosion, I know this is a lot, but we're quickly going to go through each and every one. It is help to help identify the causes of erosion. The data can show how the area has been disturbed. The data can be used to plan strategies to combat soil erosion. Recent photographs are compared to older photographs. I've mentioned that. Replanting of trees where vegetation has been destroyed. It is not only a trees, it can be revegetation of the area. And then also to create a buffer zone of the area uh, that can be identified that is uh, of high risk and where we don't want any activity and then a farming activity or human activity and then the implementation of correct farming methods can also be uh, used to, if we identify that, uh, to be used to, to, to combat soil erosion and then to make decision makers aware of the severity of the problem and then also build a model of possible solutions. Now again, because this is a, a, a somewhat higher um, order question than the previous one, um, you have to, to think a little bit. And then also in this case, you the question, uh, if you looked at the marks, it was three marks. And then uh, in this case, you only need to, to identify or to name any three that uh, um, you can think of. And then most of the times with these uh, questions, you will, uh, so we have the, oh, you have the option that you can, if you cannot, it's not exactly the same as what the memorandum has identified. Usually it's stipulated in the memorandum that we must have a look at every other possible uh, related answers that you have been given. If it's a, a, a good answer and it relates to the solving of the problem, then you can be uh, credited uh, by um, getting the mark for your answer. Right. The next question there was, how urban and regional planners use GIS for the development of a planned shopping center at W here in block F4. So what we would need to do is, is the, this whole question is about the, the development of a planned shopping center. So we obviously have to go and look at certain features here. Now what did the, the question want us is to how you must show how the GIS can be used. So first of all, when we look at, at that area of at uh, W on the map, first of all, we have to determine existing major transport routes. That can be a layer. The accessibility can be a layer. The determinant of crime rates, because if that's the case, if it's a high crime area, then it might, might be not be a suitable area for the shoppers, the shopkeepers, and then also for the clients. When you park your vehicle, uh, you want it to be safe. Right, the economic status of the inhabitants, because that play a role of the, if it's going to be a viable area, uh, location for uh, the shopkeepers, because they need to make money as well and bring a product to a specific area. The number of customers, in other words, our threshold population, the minimum uh, uh, number of, of or quantity of people that uh, make the, the shopping center viable. And then what competition exists in the area? And then the cost to build the shopping center there, if it's flat area, it might be cheaper. If it's a steeper area and the topography or the soil is not of a, and the geology is not good uh, for the development, it might cost a, a little bit more or a lot, of, a lot more to, to build the shopping center there. Then the types of products that's gonna be sold, that can be also uh, layers that can be used. And then the suitability, like I've mentioned, of the geology, the top topography, the relief, the drainage and the soils. And then any zoning and bylaws of the municipality that might prohibit uh, certain uh, uh, um, uh, stages in the development. And then also the availability of space for further development. Because you've got a shopping center, you might want to extend after a year or two. 
and then uh, add some other uh, um, products that, that, that can be, be sold there as well. Right, so in this case, we you had to, to, to name only two of them, and then you, we've come and given you our nearly 10 different um, answers here, and these are all the, the issues that the urban and regional planners will then have a look at when they're going to develop or look for a location for a plant shopping center. Right, then in the paper there was a sketch map. The sketch map is a plan view of a part of the built-up area of Queenstown and its surrounding. Now the first question there, what is attribute data? Now learners, if you can remember what we've said there, that's one of the, the very important concepts. We've got spatial data and attribute data. The information that you see there on the sketch map will be spatial data because it shows features, geographic features. Um, attribute data is the, feed, the description of the spatial data, a road, the description of the road, the characteristics of the road, what does it consist of, how wide the road is, when was it built, by whom was it built, is it the tar road, is it the gravel road, uh, all that information. So remember, attribute data is data that gives a description of the spatial feature or the spatial data. Right, the second question there. First of all, use the symbols in the key. I've cut off the key, but you will see the key on the, on the next slide. Uh, below the map to indicate the position of the following attribute data, the Berries Reservoir, uh, Lawrence de Lange Nature Reserve at the cemetery. Now, if you use your, your map to identify these features, you will see that this area is the nature reserve, here's the cemetery, and that's Berry's Reservoir. But this is not your answer. You cannot just write down the nature reserve, because what does the answer that the question stipulates? It says, use the symbols. So in other words, you must draw the symbols as uh, according to the key. So in this case, the symbols for the nature reserve were lines, diagonal lines, and then for the cemetery, it was a number of, of crosses, just like for, for our grave symbol. And then the Berry's Reservoir is like wavy lines, for because uh, a reservoir is a water feature. And these were the, 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 the way, or this was the way that you needed to, to, to answer on the paper, to draw in those lines, to draw in the symbols. Right, so just to give you, uh, again, there's the symbols for Berry's Reservoir and then for the Nature Reserve and then for the cemetery. Now, the last question there was to give the spatial position of the hiking trail at point X on the sketch map. Right, spatial position. Our spatial position can be dealt with in two ways. We can either have it as a relative position or an absolute position. Relative means it's a description according to direction. And then uh, um, our, our um, accurate description is then using the um, geographic latitude and longitude um, of, of that point X to identify it by means of where it is south and how and where it is at, at, at east in longitude. Now, first of all, if we look at our spatial position, in your mind or on the map, draw in your, your four main directions, north, south, east, and west. Right. And then, when you look at uh, the, 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 the X mark there, so you will remember this is the, the Perry's Reservoir, so the X is north to the reservoir. There's Bongolo Dam, or Bongola Dam, and then it is to the west of the dam. There's the nature reserve, so it's to the east of the nature reserve. And if we look at this hexagon, or this area of Queenstown, and the cemetery, if we look at that, X is then, the position there is to the northeast. So this makes it much easier for you to identify your spatial position. Right. It's like I've said there, any one of those. So it's north of Berry's Reservoir, it's west of the dam, it's east of the right nature reserve, and it's northeast of the hexagon or Queenstown or the cemetery. 
Right, when we deal with our absolute position, it means you have to draw two lines there to identify our uh, latitude and longitude and then read it off from the values that has been given to you. So in that case, you don't have to worry about uh, what we've got here. It is just a, re uh, a referral to what we've got as our latitude and longitude value. So for that question, you could have dealt with it either in a uh, descriptive manner or then in, in other words, relative position or then as a absolute position, we have to go and measure and determine the exact latitude and longitude.